Welcome to the first episode of our video series on cattle farmer training, brought to you by the Karen Beef Academy. This video series will not only give you a good understanding of cattle farming and what needs to be taken into consideration, but will also assist you in becoming more profitable and sustainable as a cattle farmer. We will also cover a wide range of topics throughout this series, aimed to inform you on best practice and enlighten you on some new techniques. We will also shed some light on challenges facing cattle farmers and how to overcome them. This episode outlines the beef industry an introduction to the existing South African cattle market, what a ruminant is and why nutrition is so important in ruminants. Ending with what kind of cattle farmer you want to be and the potential that exists as a cattle farmer in South Africa. Livestock farming is South Africa's largest agricultural sector there are an estimated 300,000 beef cattle farmers ranging from small to large scale and 3 million communal farmers. South Africa has an estimated 20 million cattle consisting of the following main breeds, namely Bonsmara, Brahman, Ngoni, Beef Master, Simentala, Santa Ketrudas, Angus, Simbra, Drakensberger, and Africana. Boss Indicus, characterized by a hump on their shoulders, for example, Brahman, would thrive more in extensive hot areas, whereas Boss Taurus, for example, Angus, Shorthorn, and Hereford, would thrive better in colder and more intensive systems. The red meat industry contributes more than 40% to the agricultural sector. It is the second fastest growing commodity in this sector, and with South Africans being big meat eaters, it provides cattle farmers with many opportunities to be more successful. Wiener, cow, and oxen sales form a large part of the total income for cattle farmers. Winner sales peak at around March through to May. The best time to sell is from October to December. Cows should be sold at the right age, being six to eight months old and at the optimum weight of between 200 and 240 kilograms in order to maximize the best possible price. South African beef are classified according to age, fat cover, and carcass composition, and are roller marked according to the classification of each carcass. Prices vary per grade and can also vary by season. Class A indicates that the beef originated from a young animal with no mature teeth. Class B is the intermediate grade, and they have two permanent incisors. Class C indicates an older animal with anything more than two incisors. The following are characteristics of meat classification in South Africa. Cattle are ruminants, which means they have four stomachs that process food differently to the normal monogastric systems like we find in humans. Cattle graze on grasses, so their stomachs need to be able to adapt to this diet. A ruminant stomach is composed of four compartments, where the rumen is the main section due to the microbes, also called microorganisms, which are the bacteria, protozoa, and fungi that live inside and ferment the grass that enters the stomach. They break it down into smaller particles that can be used by the animal's body. Cattle have the ability to regurgitate their food. 
This is noticeable when the animal is standing still and is chewing again. It is also a way in which they break down the grass into simpler forms for the microbes. The rumen is like a factory and the microbes are like the factory workers. You pay the workers or microbes by feeding them to do the work, breaking down feed source. If the factory or rumen is not a nice environment for the workers to work in, they will get upset and could resign. Similarly, if you do not feed the microbes the correct proteins, they forget how to work and the feed breakdown process is affected. This can be seen in the dung consistency and smell. We often need to feed or supplement the microbes with urea-based licks to get them to break down the high fibrous winter felt. This is a building up process whereby you feed them little bits to start with and increase slowly. If you suddenly feed too much or skip a few days, your microbes die and you must start again. The simple statement, you are what you eat, can apply to cattle nutrition as well. If your herd has access to good quality grazing that is pollution free and in a safe area, cattle are able to gain weight in a healthy internal environment. Nutrition determines the why in which cattle will grow, produce milk, reproduce and be overall healthy animals with a strong immune system that can withstand parasites or cold and warm environments. The type and amount of nutrient demand for cattle will be determined by the seasons, production stage of the animal, and the state of grazing available. The nutritional value of grazing land thus differs as drastically as the environments in which they are found, and there is no one-size-fits-all approach to correct the nutritional deficiencies or imbalances in all the various pastures. For this reason, a number of supplementary feeds for ruminants are available from suppliers, like the three-phase lick program, which has been developed for a cow-calf system in areas where big differences occur in the nutritional value of summer and winter pastures and where acute to moderate deficiencies in phosphorus occur. Supplementary licks, and more especially ones with urea, must be fed with extreme care. If done incorrectly, your entire head can die. So make sure you get a nutritionist's advice or that of a professional from your local cooperative or representative before feeding any supplementary leaks to your head. The three-phase leak program constitutes phase one being summer and using wet season leaks. This period starts approximately four to six weeks after good rain. The felt is abundant, green, high in protein, highly digestible, and palatable. Phosphate and trace elements are the most limited nutrients on green natural felt, and the purpose of the wet season lick is to maximize growth. Phase two, in winter, dry season licks are used. This period starts in autumn when temperatures start dropping, rainfall declines, and the felt grows at a slow rate. It is recommended that beef producers Breach this period with a transitional leak, particularly in sourfield areas where summer and winter pastures vary considerably. The advantage of this practice is that the last phosphate supplement can still be given and animals become accustomed to the urea contained in the dry season leaks. As soon as plants are dormant and their nutritional value therefore poor, dry season leaks must be provided. Dry season felt is low in protein, poorly digestible and less palatable, causing lower grass intake. The primary deficiency is protein, or more specifically, nitrogen, for the rumen's microorganisms. Therefore, protein, and in particular, 
degradable protein and non-protein nitrogen are the most important nutrients in winter leeks to maintain body condition. Various leeks are available depending on the individual farmer's environment and preferences. Phase 3 is from August to October, so late dry season supplements and production leeks are used. In the late dry season, felt is usually dry and very low in protein, resulting in low digestibility. Intake is also affected with little available material. The purpose of a supplement is to limit a loss of mass and energy, so protein must be provided by production leak. This period is the most expensive, and producers must therefore be very selective when providing leaks. Body Condition Scoring, or BCS, is a great method for critically examining the nutritional status of your herd. It is a management tool designed to assess the fat and muscle covering on an animal's body. This scoring system runs on a 1 to 5 point scale where 1 is very thin and 5 is overweight. The ideal score for a cow during mating season should be around 3 for optimal reproductive performance. Beef production is a large and important segment of the South African agricultural sector. Consider your resources, the land you have available, and your level of interest and capabilities before deciding to engage in the cattle farming business. Identify why you want to raise cattle and set yourself personal and economic goals. Decide whether you want to farm on your own or be part of a communal farming enterprise. There are various ways or types of cattle farming you need to consider before starting your small-scale cattle farming enterprise. They will depend on your available resources, like land for grazing and money for nutritional and health needs. In these operations, calves or weaners are bred and raised and then sold to be fattened for slaughter. A breeding herd consists of cows and bulls that are used to produce calves for sale as breeding or feeder animals. It is ideal to have a controlled breeding season rather than having bulls run with cows continuously a month to one and a half or even two months breeding season is recommended. The resulting shortened calving season increases the possibility of having a uniform set of calves ready to sell at market time. Another advantage is that you can concentrate your work with cows during calving into a shorter span and select breeding dates so that calves are born at the time of year that suits you best. A further advantage of this is your ability as the farmer to match the ideal season for grazing resources with the cow's requirements. Mature cows require 8% of crude protein in dry matter. If lagging, a supplement of 20 to 30% of protein is needed. Mineral mix and salt mix should also be provided. Cows should calve with a body condition score of 3. Lactating cows need 3.5% of their body weight in dry matter daily and 550 grams of protein per day. The cheapest source for this is grass or homegrown feeds, but these may need to be purchased in winter. Dry, non-pregnant cows need 2% of their body weight in dry matter and only 220 grams of protein per day. So it makes sense to match your calving plan with your feed availability. Dry pregnant cows need 2.5% of their body weight in dry matter and 220 to 350 grams of protein per day, depending on state of gestation. Crib feeding, suckling calves have access to grain mixture. Growing calves need the best possible balance of protein and energy to reach optimal growth 
and ensuring the best possible calving rates in breeding animals and best price point in winners that are sold. Calving rates are the best and most commonly used parameters to gauge reproductive performance of cows or a herd. Research shows that the communal sector calving rate in South Africa is at only 23%. Herein lies the biggest opportunity for all South African small-scale cattle farmers to increase this calving rate to their advantage and financial gain. Thank you for watching. We do hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please follow our social media channels for more and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to access the other videos in this series. Until next time, goodbye.